Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm a, your instructor. Uh, this is a class that uh, uh, Riche asked me to put together. I'm very happy to be here uh, doing it. Uh, I actually have taught in the past. I used to teach for uh, USC's uh, healthcare graduate program when I, when I was in Sacramento. Hmm? Right on, USC. Right on, USC. USC, not UC, USC. Uh, so um, I'm qualified to teach this class. I've been a CFO for about 30 years. I started uh, in healthcare uh, in 1982. I uh, went through college in Los Angeles, got a degree in accounting, and uh, served in the Air Force for six years. Then I went into healthcare and started at Sutter and became their CFO. And I was Sutter CFO for about 10 years when they were growing and putting the system together. And uh, then I've been CFOs at other places. I've been here about two years, so um, we're really looking forward to it. Um, normally, uh, when I'm presenting, I'm like presenting to a board, and I'm I'm trying to convey you know a bunch of information in a short period of time. Sometimes in a hostile environment, uh, <laughs> but um, this is not like that. This is this is about you. This is educational. So my my intent here is simply to find out from you um, what you need to know. Uh, I'm gonna, I've, I've kind of designed this course uh, uh, in a way that um, <clears throat> you know, I think will be helpful for you to get you through it. We're going to start at a high level, but we can modify it. <clears throat> in fact, I taught the first class two days ago, and um, I actually made some modifications to the course. I took a few things out. I added some other things to make it better uh, so it'd be more understandable. <clears throat> okay. So um, essentially what I'm trying to do is teach you financial concepts that you can use in your uh, daily work environment. Uh, certainly uh, if you ever get into things like budget negotiations or um, you know, maybe you're doing a programmatic review, maybe there's a new service that we want to start, who knows. Uh, it's going to be very helpful for you to understand these concepts, the language we use, uh, how somebody like myself uh, looks at um, various opportunities. Uh, so that's there. <clears throat> uh, we're going to talk a little bit about budgets, target setting, uh, resource allocation. Okay, what does resource allocation mean? Anybody have a clue about that? Uh, basically, um, uh, as we'll talk about, you know, we, we get into the financial statements, so we have an expense budget. So the expense budget represents resource allocation. So we say, okay, we're going to have, you know, 4,000. Uh, employed employees, where they're going to be, who, which department gets those. Um, we have a capital budget, so we're going to be spending about $30 million next year. We're actually going to finish with that, a little test on where do you think we should spend $30 million next year, okay? So those, those, that's resource allocation, that's, and that's a big, uh, that's a big issue. Uh, and then eventually in the course, we're going to get to how we evaluate projects, how we do performance improvement. Uh, and you can see we've got five uh, lessons here. Um, and so the first one is kind of a very high level. So I thought it'd start really high level because if you get far enough up, you can kind of see the big picture. And then subsequent lessons will be sort of drilling down into uh, some of the individual components so we can kind of refine that. But we're going to start with the big picture. So um, uh, first one is long-term financial planning. And so my objectives today is I want to give you just a, um, uh, a very brief look at financial statements. So, you, so when we talk about financial statements and income statement of the balance sheet, you kind of know what I'm talking about <coughs> and why, uh, how they're used. Uh, in the second lesson, we're going to come back and go into more detail. I'm going to teach you how to read a set of financial statements. But we're going to start at a very high level, just the big, broad concepts of what they do because uh, that's important because we're going to be talking about a lot of financial terms, as you can imagine. Um, then we're going to talk about the long-term financial planning process. Now that's really um, timely because we're actually in the process of setting our budget with the board right now, and, and a lot of this ties directly to the budgeting process. Uh, we're going to talk about this concept called free cash flow. Uh, and then, um, um, and but basically free cash flow is the amount of money that we generate after operations, after we pay your salaries and all the vendors, the amount of money we have left to invest in capital or pay down long-term debt, 
or start a new program or do something like that. So, so my objective today is just really to teach you where the money comes from, where it goes, and the kinds of decisions we have to make. Okay? All right. And you, you can interrupt me anytime. This can be very, uh, very conversational. It's meant to be conversational. Yes. Um, um, uh, uh, patients per day. Yeah. Those are the things that we as nurses yes. will be really uh, face day to day. Yes. Would it be possible to add that? Yeah, and we're actually, when we get down to session four, oh, which is sure. operational analysis, okay. that's when I'm going to get into some of that detail. I'm going to talk about performance improvement, uh, how you go about turning an organization around, the kinds of things you put in place, things like that. But today we're going to start at a high level. Okay. So, I always like to start this with something funny. So here's a quote, happiness is positive cash flow. Okay. Um, uh, although actually it's not that funny because when I first arrived here two years ago, we did not have positive cash flow. In fact, we were in a deficit. And uh, that was a very, very uh, tenuous, stressful situation. And what generally happens without adequate cash flow to pay our bills is some people don't get paid. Uh, and they wind up being pretty unhappy and they get on the phone to call me and they call supervisors and other things and board of directors and everybody comes to me and says, well, you know, how come I can't get paid? Uh, so that's why it's important for you to understand about um, <clears throat> what, what, where the cash comes from and where it goes and how we balance that, how we plan for it. Okay, and I'm going to keep talking about cash because cash is really important. Uh, and one of the things you'll see is... Um, um, in terms of running an organization, the, the number one reason any organization runs out of, goes out of business is they run out of cash, okay, for one reason or another. Okay. Um, well, what do we do with cash? So, um, you know, we get cash because we take care of patients, we send out bills, uh, we get paid. If we do everything right, we get paid. Uh, plus, we get a bunch of supplemental reimbursement from government programs, and that total is about what do you think? How much revenue do you think we bring in a year right now? Any guesses? Just order of magnitude. What do you think our annual revenue or annual cash flow, annual expenses are? 250 million. 250 million. Okay, $900 million. 900. Next year it's going to be about 920. So very shortly we're going to be a quote billion dollar organization, which is a pretty big deal. It's a lot of money. And we're, you're going to get to see where that, you know, where that comes from. Um, but then we, when we operate a hospital, in order to take care, care of patients and bring that money in, we have to have employees. We have to have all of you taking care of patients, and we have to pay you. How often do you get paid? Every other week. Every other week. You get paid every two weeks, right? Okay. Uh, we have other needs. So we have something called working capital, which we're going to talk about. But basically... Um, there's a timing lag between when we have to pay you for your services and when we collect. So how long do you think it takes us to get a bill out and bring the money back in? It's about 60 to 70 days right now. Okay? So if we're paying you every two weeks, but I don't get paid from the payers for two months, where, does the, where do you think that money comes from? That's called working capital. So that's money that we have to have just to operate the hospital before we have profits or anything. Uh, then we have something called debt service, which is uh, we owe people money. We have to pay that back. And then finally, we have to do, or we'd like to do, capital expenditures, facilities, equipment, IT, strategic projects. And what happens when we run short of cash is we have to prioritize, okay? who gets paid and what we do. So what do you think the highest priority is? Employees, employees yes, because if we don't pay our employees, uh, they're unhappy. But more importantly, to me, it's actually illegal for me to let you work and not be able to pay you. I could go to jail, okay? Seriously. And uh, if you don't pay your uh, payroll taxes to the government, they get really upset, <laughs> okay? 
So that's the highest priority. But then there, at the bottom of the list, there are things that are what are called discretionary, okay, like equipment. Okay, well, some equipment we have to get because it breaks and it's required for patient care. But some, you know, new beds, kind of discretionary. We'd like to have new beds. We could we can live with a 20-year-old bed. We'd like to have new ones, but if you don't have the money, you, you can't you can't do it. And so what ha what's happened here over the last you know 10 years or so is that very very little capital equipment was purchased. And so what does that look like from your perspective? The short floors are dirty. Pa walls need painting. Uh, beds get old. Equipment breaks all that stuff okay so so one of my jobs is to make sure that we have enough cash to keep everything current okay all right um, all right now we're going to talk about financial statements and in your package I'm just going to give you this for reference all the way at the back the last tab there's a letter a little memo from me to the finance committee and behind that <clears throat> are our actual financial statements. We'll be referencing those. I just want to point them out to you at this point. Um, and there's, there's basically in finance, there's three reports that we use. We call them statements, but they're, they're financial reports that we use to understand everything that we need to about a company. And this is not unique to hospitals. Any business in the, in the world uses these three financial statements, okay? and they work together. <clears throat> so the first one's called an income statement <clears throat> or a statement of revenues and expenses. It means the same thing. Uh, but basically what an income statement does is it measures our performance. It measures how much revenue we generate. That's that 900 million number. What our expenses are. So how much money we have to spend to generate that revenue. And then whether we have a surplus or not. And that surplus is called income. Okay, so revenues minus expenses equals income, all right? Uh, then there's a balance Sorry. sheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Revenues minus expenses equals the bed here, or am I elevating? It's actually right there. Okay. It's right there. Yeah. It's coming up, okay. coming up at you. Okay. Uh, the next one <coughs> is called a balance sheet, okay? And the reason it balances is you have something called assets, uh, which are things like this desk, or this building, or all the equipment that you work with, or this you know facility. Those are assets. Cash is an asset. Receivables are an asset. So that's on the left side. And assets equals uh, what's called liabilities and equity. So liabilities are money that we owe to people, other organizations, and equity is the difference. Okay. And in a future lesson, we're going to talk about the ratios of those because it really talks about how an organization is capitalize. Capitalize means where do you get the money to set up a business and run it, okay? Uh, but the important thing about, about, about a balance sheet is it, it measures not our performance but our health, okay? So at any point in time, it's that you can look at a balance sheet, figure out how much cash you have, figure out what your liquidity ratios are, capitalization ratios, figure out your debt. Lots of things we're going to learn about. <coughs> so Income statement is performance, and performance is measured over a period of time, typically a month or a year, whereas a balance sheet is reported as a, as a, a specific moment in time. Not a period, but a specific moment in time. And then what a, a statement of cash flow does is explains why cash goes up or down. Okay? That's high level. Now let's go through that. Yeah. In your balance sheet, Spencer, yeah. do you have to have a certain amount of cash You should. We, we are kind of unique, and we're going to actually talk about that today because we're in a unique situation where we are financed or capitalized by the county through a loan, and the loan has certain parameters that we have to meet. But that gives us the ability to borrow money from them to fund operations. Um, <clears throat> but um, what was I going to say? Um, but along with that, they have a provision. So there's, there's, this, uh, there's this golden rule of finance. And the golden rule of finance is he who has the gold makes the rules. Okay, so right now, <laughs> the, 
The county has the money, they make the rules. They say, we're going to lend you money, but here, here are the rules, okay? And one of the rules is that everything that we, all the money that comes into us, doesn't come into us. It comes to the county, to their bank account. And we track it. It's ours, but it's over there. And then if we want money for payroll or to pay vendors, I have to ask for it. And I do that every, every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so very sh quickly, so here's an income statement. It, if you look at the top of an income statement, it should say for the period ending, which ours does. The formula is revenues minus expenses equal income. Okay, and if you looked at our income statement, which is that first, uh, first report, you'll see lots and lots of numbers, but the top part is revenue. The middle part is expenses, and the bottom is income, okay? And it's about, if we were to annualize it, that's for nine months, so it's not a full year. If you'd annualize that, it's about 900 million of revenue, 870 of expenses, and 30 million of profit or income, okay? All right, here's the formula for the balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus equity. That's the second report back there. And again, bunches of numbers, but on the top part, it lists all of our assets, and they total about 400 million. It lists all of our liabilities, and that totals actually 700 million. And then the difference, which is our net worth, or equity, is minus $300 million, okay? Now, generally, you want equity to be positive. We're negative. So we're like digging out of this hole, and you say, well, gee, if you're if the organization's worth a negative $300 million, how on earth are you staying in business? The answer is because we have cash. We can do that, and we have prospects, and we're improving, and things like that. And there's some special things related to pensions that we'll get into at a later date, maybe, that sort of confuse the issue. <clears throat> but that's the basic message. One thing I was just, one question. Yeah. Uh, I, I just didn't see the net product, you know, like how much money Um, so that is, um, that is on the income statement, if you want to look at it. Um, <clears throat> and first of all, I'll just go back to what I wrote, to that first page that I wrote. Um, and I'm looking, this is behind the first tab, meet of the Finance Committee. Uh, we're purport reporting operating income of $6.6 .6 million for the month of March and $17 million year to date for nine months. Okay? And then... Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's, yeah, let's not get too much into that today because we're going to do that next time. Okay. I didn't want to overwhelm you with numbers. I just want to give you the concepts. So there's an income statement, there's a balance sheet, and then there's a statement of cash flow. So an income statement measures what? Performance. Okay. So how fast can we run the 100 yard dash? Okay. A balance sheet measures health. What's your blood pressure? Okay, difference. Okay, uh, and then finally, because those two statements are, are done under what's called the uh, uh, accrual accounting or generally accepted accounting principles, which means it's not exactly the same as cash, uh, we want to have a separate report because cash is really important. So we want to understand what's going on with cash. And that's what the third one does. And basically, we, we group cash into three types of things. One is how much cash we generate from operations. The second is how much we spend on capital. And the third is how much we spend or borrow on debt. Okay? So those three documents give you everything you really need to know about a company. And I can, uh, I've been doing this a long time, I can read pull up a set of statements, I can read it like a book and know exactly what's going on. And you will too by the time we finish this. No, so it's pretty probably standard not. to have negative numbers in the parentheses or brackets, right? This yeah, well, particularly when you put them together, um, you want to know that, that one is plus, like we generated $45 million in cash from operations, we spent $30 million on buying things, or we spent $15 million on reducing debt. So just to avoid confusion. But sometimes we 
move, sometimes we move the pluses and minuses because I understand what they are, but it confuses everybody else. So we had an incident yesterday where we got this report <coughs> from um, uh, the state on uh, something called the AB85 redirection money, and it was a minus $16 million. So, you know, my boss comes running and says, oh, my God, we're going to lose $16 million. And I look at, no, 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 it means they're going to, they're reducing the amount that they're going to withhold from the county when the money, so by the time it gets us, it's $16 million more. It's good news. So it's easy to make mistakes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now let's talk about some terms. All right. So first one is uh, something called EBITDA, EBITDA, free cash flow. And what we're doing there is we are essentially looking at the income statement, that first statement, which is revenues minus expenses equals income, and adjusting it by taking out expenses that aren't really cash. And so in accounting, I mentioned this during accepted accounting principles, we have something called depreciation. Okay, so if we buy, um, as we have just done, uh, all new beds for Alameda Hospital, that's $2 million or something, okay, that's not an expense. That doesn't hit the income statement. And the reason is those beds are going to be used for more than just a p one year. They're going to be used for maybe 10 years. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, well, that's $2 million. <clears throat> it's going to be used for 10 years. We'll put the $2 million on the balance sheet as an asset, and then we will depreciate it. We will allocate that expense, 200000 a year, to the income statement. And that's the, the intent is to give us, <clears throat> on the income statement, a real assessment of how we're actually doing. Because if you, just, if you all, just put all the cash on there and said, oh, well, we, we built a $100 million building this year, so did we lose $100 million? No, we, we just made an investment. So investments are capital assets that go on the balance sheet, and then those assets get expensed over time through depreciation. Okay? So what we're doing is we're converting <coughs> income into cash, free cash flow. Now, those two numbers are, in our case, pretty close, actually, because we don't have that much depreciation, because most of it's borne by the county. Um, yeah? Is the depreciation value the same or comparable for capital equipment, um, buildings? Yeah, um, it, 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 it depends on uh, the category. So something like an IT system, there's guidelines, would be probably depreciated over seven years. Um, you know, some furniture might be five years, uh, a building might be 30 years. Uh, it means on the balance sheet, the book value would be zero. You might still have it. It's pro the value is probably not zero, but y from an accounting standpoint, the book value would be zero. Does okay. that get into on the capital equipment form? I assume there's some type of length of life or whatever. Does that get calculated into the depreciation of that? Yes, it, it does, yeah. Yeah, when we do that, it goes into something called a fixed asset ledger where it says, okay, we, we bought this, here's how much we paid for it, here's the useful life, and then divides it out, and then that amount goes on to the, um, as an operating expenses depreciation. And then one more, the uh, T not being in there, is that because of the taxation? Yes, we do taxes. not we do not pay taxes, so, so some people do put that. So it's earnings before interest, depreciation, and amortization. Amortization is just like depreciation, except instead of a real asset, it's an intangible asset. Like if we had a copyright to some music or who knows, goodwill that we purchased. Okay. All right. Working capital, we talked about. Does everybody get working capital? You get the concept of working capital? So in our case, <coughs> and the formula for working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And if we went to the balance sheet, um, which you don't have to, but you could. Uh, and find the term current assets and looked up the value of that. In fact, let's just do it for fun. <clears throat> so this would be that second report after my letter. And it says uh, balance sheet at the top. And if you go to that first subtotal, okay, so I'm on this report says balance sheet at the top and assets and then there's a listing of things and then there's a subtotal right there 
Okay. Does anybody see that? What's the number? Next page. Next. Nope. Next page. Oh yeah, there's no page number, but it, but it says balance sheet on top. Anyway, well, I'll just do it for you. It's okay. <clears throat> I could probably put page numbers on this; it'd be easier. Uh, two, it says two two six one eight five. Now, in in finance, we typically drop three zeros be just to save you know ink. Um, so two hundred twenty six million is our current assets, and then if you go further down, there's a line for current liabilities, one hundred twenty two million. Okay, so we have 226 million of current assets. In this case, mostly things that we've billed for but have not received yet and paid for, and those are called receivables. Okay, so that's that timing difference. And then we only have 122 of liabilities, so we're more current paying our vendors and you than we are getting paid. That difference is about $100 million, okay, which means we need a hundred million of ready money just to keep this place afloat and pay the bills. Okay? That's what working capital is. And I'll show you, I have a little, have a little graph on that a little bit here. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to cover these terms again. So a capital expenditure is something that we buy that is not an expense. Okay? So if I pay your salaries, and I do because if you look at your paycheck it's actually got my name on it okay uh, that's not a capital asset that's an expense okay but <clears throat> if I pay a vendor an individual to develop an IT system that's going to benefit the organization for five years that's a capital expense doesn't hit the income statement right away except for the annual depreciation or amortization but it's capital. So one expense goes to the income statement. The other payment goes to the balance sheet. Okay? So that's important because I'm it's important to get things uh, on the balance sheet which shows what we own versus the income statement which shows performance. So if I were to take that same million dollars or whatever it is and put it on the income statement then our expenses would go up and our income would go down and we would report less earnings. Okay. okay. Similarly, for debt reduction, debt is a liability. Um, does anybody remember what financial statement liabilities show up on? So the income statement is revenues and expenses and income, and the balance sheet is assets and liabilities and equity. So that's on the balance sheet. So if I pay down debt, if I take cash, pay down debt, <coughs> I'm reducing cash on the, cash is an asset, I'm reducing cash on the balance sheet, I'm also reducing liabilities on the balance sheet, okay? But I'm not affecting the income statement, okay? This is important because the board typically pays attention to the income statement. So if I'm doing something that is distorting the income statement, making it look worse, they're gonna get bad information and they're going to use that information to make probably bad decisions like, oh my gosh, we better do a layoff because we have to cut expenses. Okay, so it's important to get these things. In. It actually has real implications. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about the relationship between revenue and performance and free cash flow. Okay, remember that concept, free cash flow? And so, again, free cash flow is the amount of money that we have left after we pay all of our normal expenses that we can then do something with, like pay down debt or invest in capital, okay? So, <clears throat> here's a question. Is it better to have more, cash, more free cash flow or less free cash flow? More. More, because you can do more things, right? If you're going on a shopping spree, would you have a, rather have $100 or $1,000? Probably $1,000. Okay. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> um, right now, this year, actually, our net revenues are actually about $875,000 right now. So if you look down the left side, 
it's 875. That, and our performance <coughs> is right about 4% right now, 4% EBITDA margin. So that's the amount of free cash flow divided by net revenue. So if we have 875,000 million of revenue and a 4% EBITDA margin, how much cash, how much free cash flow do we generate? $35 million. That's just intersected. Okay. Now, <coughs> next year, our plan is to generate $900 million of net revenue, so increase more revenue, but to improve the performance to 5%. So if that were to happen, how much free cash flow would we generate? $45 million. Okay, very good. Okay, and that would then determine how much we have to spend on things we want to do. And so financial planning is really about balancing the amount of cash we generate with how much we can spend. Okay, got it? Okay, good. All right. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm trying to talk about here is the, um, the way the uh, capital, it's kind of hot, huh, I'm swearing, the way the uh, capital planning process and strategic and financial planning process works. And typically what's supposed to happen is the strategic plan is developed around, for us, around September, October, uh, and it's a long-term plan, like three to five years. Um, <coughs> and then we do a financial plan around the end of the calendar year, maybe January. And we're going to show you what, the, what that actually looks like in a second. And at, at that point, the board looks at that discussion we just had and said, gee, you know, we, we think you need to have a 5% EBITDA margin because we have all these things that we want to do. And so they'd say, here's your operating target, and here's how much money you can spend on capital. Then, after that, around March, April, right about now, we then do a budgeting process. We say, okay, can we take those targets and turn them into real allocations and start the year, which in our case is July 1st, with a budget? What is a budget, by the way? Does anybody know what a budget is? <laughs> what is a budget? A it's a plan. Okay. What, what does a budget mean to a department manager? Pain. Hmm? Pain. 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 Very hard. Creativity. It's, it's, uh, it means, it means um, labor costs, staffing, direct care, indirect care, overtime, sick time, yeah. it's, equipment. It's, it's giving you the authority to run your business. Right? It, so it's your authority. Okay. So your authority is determined by your budget. And as a manager, you can typically sign off on anything that's within yours. Can you, can you sign off on something for another department? No. no, you can't. Can you spend more than your budget? You can. You can. You can. You can. Yeah, yeah. So that's your authority. Where do I get my authority? What is my authority? Your authority is to make sure you get paid. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my responsibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually not the county. The, so the board of directors has the authority to tell people how much they can spend. So if we do a budget that says we're going to spend $900 million, that's our authority. Now, I personally, myself, individually, can sign for anything up to $500,000. And my boss can sign up to a million, and above that it has to go to the board, if it's a capital item. Um, if it's within the budget, I can, I can sign anything. Um, <coughs> and um, that's authorizing expenditure. In terms of signing contracts, and the reason I'm going through this is we're going to, in a later lesson, we're going to talk about how you do a turnaround. Okay, there, one of the things we did is we centralized um, the authority to bind the organization by signing a contract. So when I arrived, basically any manager could bind this organization by signing anything, and did. Okay, we had some good ones. <coughs> so one of the first things we did is, okay, there's only two people who can sign a contract in this organization. I'm one, my boss is the other. The board can't even do it, okay? So that means 
everything has to come through one place is, you know, that which allows us to evaluate it and make sure that everybody knows. We had departments <coughs> doing similar projects, you know. They didn't know, it, didn't know each other were doing it. And just like this du dupling, duplicating costs. Okay, so that's the, the, the cycle. The, the reason I'm showing you that is to so that bring you around to the financial planning process, which is what we're talking about today. Okay, so it, we're doing it, um, we actually did do it in January when we were supposed to. Now we're doing the budget, and I'm going to show you what we kind of went through and how that fits. Okay. Okay, now a financial plan. This is actually a financial plan. This whole thing is right here. You can, you can get much more detail than this, but this has got all, of the, all the components. So um, <clears throat> the way this works is uh, we start with where we are. Uh, I'm an old navigator, and one of the things you do is you figure out where you are, and then you know how to get to where you're going. Um, so in 2016 is where we are. <clears throat> so our revenue this year will be about $875 million. And when we did this, um, we were, back in January, we were targeting about a 3% EBITDA margin. We're currently at 4, but we had 3 at the time. And uh, that would have generated about $26 million in free cash flow, okay, which is on line 3 and then carried to line 4. And um, then we improved our working capital by $20 million. Okay. Any ideas how we did that? Okay, we collected our receivables. So all those receivables are sitting out there. We collected them. So rather than sitting in somebody else's bank account, that cash was sitting in our bank account. Okay, that was good. Um, debt service payments, about 18 million. And then at the very bottom, uh, 25 million in capital. So that's kind of the plan for this year. And then that leaves us about a $6 million surplus. That's the plan. Okay. Well, what's the plan for next year? So this is what we told the board back in um, January. This is, okay, well, we think, we think we can get the revenues up to $901 million. Okay. But we need to improve performance. Now, the other group said, well, how are you going to improve performance? I said, well, we'll talk about that at a later lesson. But basically... Uh, well, let me take it back. So which financial statement tells us our performance? Which? The correct income statement. Okay. So performance is income, and the formula to get the income is revenues minus expenses. So if we want to increase revenue or income, what are our choices? You got it. Excellent. You get an A. Okay, either increase revenue or decrease expenses. Okay, all right. So we said we think our we think we can get revenues up to nine hundred million, and we think we can improve performance too. So that means that revenue is growing quicker than expenses. Okay. So five percent margin that that would generate forty five million dollars. Okay. <coughs> we think there's still going to be a small improvement in working capital. Uh, pay some debt. But then it means we can afford to spend $30 million on capital next year. $30 million, okay. You think that's enough? Yeah, I know. But this is a big deal. This is an important thing because, you know, there's people really, there's a lot of things that need to be done around here, right? Okay, and then we kind of project out in the future. But so does everybody kind of get the concept of a financial plan? So what we're doing is balancing cash we generate with cash we spend. All right? Okay. Uh, now, remember I talked about that line of credit with the county? Okay. That's up here. That's that red line. And the blue line is working capital. So what I've done here is I've gone back to the balance sheets, and I said if I subtracted, if I took current assets and subtracted current liabilities every year, what does that look like? And that's that blue line. And it's eerily close to the amount of money that we had to borrow from the county. Go figure. That's the $100 million. Okay. So um, it was kind of interesting because when I came here a couple of years ago, which is that spike, that big red spike uh, at the end of 2014, um, the county was going crazy. Okay, Because one of the things was 
I talked about rules. They had a rule that we couldn't go over a certain amount, and we went over that amount. And, and in particular, they said you have to be at a certain amount at June 30th of that year. And I started right after that, a couple weeks later, and they were over. Okay. They can. They have to go to the Board of Supervisors, and they were not happy. They were really seriously not happy. Okay? I mean, seriously. So the other group asked, well, you know, what, what, you know, well, what happens if you go over? And I said, bad things. Bad things happen. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so the agreement says, number one, if you think you're going to go over, you need to tell them in advance and sit down and talk to them and work out a plan to avoid it. Okay, and then it says um, if they're not happy, they can stop giving you money, which means we would go out of business. We'd shut down. Okay, so what typically would happen is they'd come in and say, "Well, you know, we don't like the way you're operating, uh, so we're going to recommend some changes, and you're either going to do them or we're going to cut you off." And the changes could be replace the board, replace the management team, lay off staff, I mean, basically whatever they wanted. You know. So it's serious. <clears throat> so that was a serious event. Um, but I was able to show them, like, well, gee, you know, folks, let's look at the working capital. And the reason that, I mean, look, go back to 2010, it was $80 million, okay? And then it, all of a sudden, working capital is now 160 million, it's double. How did, how did working capital double? What happened back then? What happened in 2011? New computer system, new computer system, okay? Lousy implementation, accounts receivable doubled because they couldn't get the bills out and get them collected. Almost took the organization down. Wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, it was, a, it was an OMG moment. It was, it was <laughs> yeah, okay. Since then, we've, we've got it down quite a bit. We've actually got the days down to 69 days, and I'll show you the... Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is more uh, granular. Um, so we're taking on the right side there the actual agreement for this year, the year we're in. So you can see there's months on the bottom there. Uh, and the green line, basically what this says is <coughs> during the year, you can have a certain amount of... You can borrow a certain amount of money, but by June 30th, that drops, and at that date, it has to be, in this case, $145 million at June 30th. July 1st, you can borrow back up again, but they want to see that steady drop, and that's that left column, that net negative balance limit at June 30th. And then on the right, the second column is the entry year fl called flexible maximum, okay? So at June 30th of this year, yes? It goes by fiscal year, and our fiscal year is June 30th. Yeah. So what we're doing here on the right is I'm projecting what that amount is going to be. In this case, that little arrow is when we did the projection. And you can see there's two lines. The reason is I'm kind of kind of a high and a low, best case. So, but we're we're projecting to come in at about 110. Limit is 145. That makes me happy. That makes this, the county auditors very happy. I got a nice note from them last week. They're very happy people. It's nice. Pay our bills. And we have a cushion. So, okay. Uh, so that's capital. Now we're almost to the end. Now, remember how I kept talking about financial planning be all about being generating cash to spend it on things, right? Okay. Here's the wish list. Here's the way. This is what people want to do. Okay. And you can see after that, got that big top part, and I've got a total. And for 2017, we've got $31 million, just over the, t the target of 30. But okay. But there's some big things on there. And that first column where it says total, that's adding up everything to the right. So, for example, if you look at number 12, uh, JGPH expansion, John George Psychiatric Hospital expansion. That is a $30 million project. $1 million next year. Got to yeah, do architectural stuff. Okay. To the ER, level 2 trauma, ETA, four minutes. Okay. Level 2 trauma, ETA, four minutes. Level 2 
Okay. Uh, but in 2017, 31 million. But then look at 18, 19, and 20. 40 million, 50 million, 59 million. And there's still some things on the bottom that we haven't figured out how to pay for yet. Right? But we, we. Okay, so now we got, this is where financial planning comes in. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, the plan says we're going to keep growing revenue and we're going to keep improving our EBITDA margin. That's the plan. We'll come back in a future course and talk about well, how, how are we actually going to do that. You know, how do you make that happen? It's a nice plan, but how do you turn that into reality? Okay? All right, let's just stop there because we're actually at the end of the lesson. We're going to do the little test. Huh? How are you going to improve margin? One thing we're going to do is we're going to grow revenue. In fact, we're doing the budget. Uh, the target here was 901,250. We're currently at 920. So we're doing better on revenue. Okay. The other thing is we're going to control expense growth. And I've got a graph I shared last night that showed sort, sort of the boom and bust cycle. But with this organization, if you go back 10 years, there, there are years where they, you know, kept their expense growth to 3% a year and started making money and then they maybe got some extra money in like the desert funds or something and then all of a sudden the cost grows is 10 to 15% a year just like they just went just had a, a party you know and then of course two or three years later they're losing all this money and they oh my god we've got to get this under control so they either reduce costs or just they get the costs back down and a couple years later they're making money and then they they go through the same cycle and the county is very very cognizant of this i mean debeck and i met with the county two weeks ago and they're like guys this is really good but we've been here a lot longer than you and this is what we <laughs> expect to happen and don't <laughs> don't let it so um we're targeting about a three percent cost growth next year that's how we do it so keep getting revenue a little bit better than expenses um, get rid of consultants, um, you know, labor optimization, all these things. We'll talk about that at a later meeting. Okay. So, comments. We don't need to go through that for information. Questions? Questions? Any questions at this point? Test? Do a test? Okay. We can do this, do this together. Okay. What are the three financial statements? And there's quite. Okay. What what does the, what's the purpose of an income statement? All right. How about a balance sheet? What about cash flow? Track the money. Fo follow the money. Follow the money. Okay. Show me the money. Whatever. Um, just to to explain cash. Yeah. Just to. Okay. What is the difference between income and EBITDA? It's it's uh, the the e the e and EBITDA is actually the same as an I, yeah. they just change it because it need to have two eyes. <coughs> it's interest, depreciation, and amortization, essentially the non-cash mm -hmm. items. Okay, to a CFO, happiness is. Cash cash. Oh, right, love it. Uh, we actually answered number seven already. Uh, what is the purpose of a financial plan? Balance, planning for cash. You want to you want to make sure. I need to plan three to five years in advance that we can have the money to do the things we want to do. Last one. What is the highest priority capital project for next year? <coughs> no. Which one? If we had, to, we could only do one of these. Which ones would you do? Expansion. Oh, you said that grow revenue. No, joint expansion. I don't know. What would you do? What would you do, Pat? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Phoebe, let's just take a vote. Phoebe, what did you do? Computer system, Pat, Pat. Probably seismic. Seismic, okay. What would you do? Okay. Christine? 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa? Same. Same? Sure. Heather? Okay. Lori? Okay. Violetta? Facilities? Okay. Okay. Carol? Same thing. Okay. Okay. John George? Okay. John George? John George. Okay. Okay. All right. There's no, there's, there's, okay. There is no right answer to that question. <laughs> it, it depends on your point of view. I, I'm, yeah, so I, I'm trying to generate as much cash as we can to get the, and then stage them so that we can get them done. Okay. And uh, in addition to cash we generate, the other thing I'm, I'm trying to do is uh, develop uh, what's called an OPM strategy, which is other people's money. <laughs> Which is go to go to one of our partners in the community and say, please give us money. So, for example, with the John George project, which is you know thirty million dollars, mm -hmm. we think we have a partner who might come in and help us. We should ask Mark Zuckerberg. He just helped San Francisco get out. Exactly. To get us yeah. Yeah. Or Elon. <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> okay. Um, just a couple minutes. So, how did this go? Did it meet your needs? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, we can do that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Can you talk yeah. about the future of what we're going to get to? Um, what was it like when you first started? So we can sort of tie our comparisons. Um, because I know you did a lot of work. So yeah. it's hard to look to say we're going to get to 5 or 6%, but I think you brought it up to like 1 to 3, right? Uh, it was at the time um, minus 3. Oh. Oh. Minus 3. So we were... We were um, just sucking cash. We were we were in bad shape. So seven percent over two years, right? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And that one From one time, yeah. No, we were. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, they were facing. Uh, yeah. It was dire. It was dire straits. Yeah. I mean, it was. I, there were there were nights when I didn't sleep because I wasn't sure I could make payroll, in uh, sh July and, and August. Yeah. Which is why these things are important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we could, but I mean, I, I at the time, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to say it publicly because people would have been scared to death. They would have left. No, I mean, I agree. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Okay. Great. We'll talk more about the uh, turnaround at a future meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you.